from our last video if you want to watch it. Why am I quite sticky? And we came straight for Wiener Schnitzel. We are at Meisel no, and Schaden, known for their incredibly crispy, fresh, what is that? And delicious Wiener Schnitzel. It's my first time in Vienna. And I don't think I've had it had a schnitzel. We actually contemplated getting one and sharing it. I'm very glad we didn't. We contemplated that because this Wiener Schnitzel, I think, is probably at least double the cost of Wiener Schnitzel at other restaurants throughout Vienna. They're like 30 euros a piece almost. I was here in 2010 backpacking, staying at a hostel that was across the street from like a very traditional tavern type restaurant and we ate schnitzel there like every night and so I have some nostalgia at play with this meal. I'm being harsh. It is it is very good. Um, I usually look at these kind of places and don't go to them because I know that, you know, my vibe normally is like hole in the wall. But when in Vienna. Oh. And thank you to our friend Monica who recommended this place. And it is a beautiful day and we're sitting outside because we're eating at 5 o'clock. Anyway, it's the start of a great trip in Vienna. Should we go home? No. Gray crown. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Steph and my husband Pete and our son Hayes and I are traveling from Copenhagen to Tbilisi, Georgia by trains, mostly. So far we've visited Legoland and Bilund and Hamburg and Vienna is our third stop. And I'm sorry if I was a little harsh on that restaurant. It was delicious. Uh, it's just that I have an irrational opposition to white tablecloths. But it was really cool because you get to see them pounding the meat and battering it and frying it all right there in the open kitchen. On a beautiful October evening. I can't get over this weather. It's gorgeous here in Vienna. Is it always like this in October? By the way, he's got his way. We're at a playground. The more things change. Loves the playground. This one's great because it's really like close to Like I know all children love playgrounds, but I feel like he loves playgrounds a lot. <laughs> Guten Morgen. Uh, this morning we're doing a very exciting electric car tour around the center of Vienna. Oh, um, today. Uh, and today, I was, I, was, I was just getting us there. But what is super special about today is it's Hayes' fourth birthday. And fun fact, he celebrated his birthday in a different country up until now, right? How was the best way to phrase that? He's like celebrated it's the a birthday. Ah, uh, okay. No, it's not though, because he actually Chattanooga, Korea. third. It's only the third. Chattanooga. Greece. Korea. Austria. We, he celebrated his birthday in four different countries: Chattanooga, Greece, Korea, and now Vienna, which is pretty cool for a four-year-old. <laughs> Be careful. He absolutely loves cars. He has forever. So we thought that this would be a really fun way to celebrate. This is an electro vintage car. And you'll never guess how we booked this oh. tour. It was to get your guide. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. set the scene. We're riding along the beautiful streets of Vienna, learning about the history and the great connection to music and Mozart. He's even playing some Mozart. Uh, but when we arrived, Hayes told him it was his birthday, so he played the happy birthday song. And Hayes has now just requested his birthday music again. So I think this 40-minute ride is going to be every happy birthday song that exists. <laughs> Do 
is a good way to see the center of Vienna, especially with a kid. It's a great, like, for your first day, just to get a quick orientation. It is not exhaustive on history, but that's not what we wanted for the four-year-old. And it's a great alternative to the horse and carriage rides. That was great. And as I said, it was made possible by Get Your Guide, who we'd like to thank for sponsoring this segment of the video. In case you haven't heard, Get Your Guide offers over 60,000 experiences in over 3,000 countries worldwide. You can book them all via a super easy app. You don't have to find a printer. There's great customer support. And all of the experiences are led by fabulous local experts. If you're traveling soon and want to check out one of the Get Your Guide experiences, as always, we have a link in the description box. Or if you're watching this on your TV, you can click the QR code right here. Thanks again to get your guide and let the birthday festivities continue. He's going to the playground. While on the whatever that car was tour, he spotted a few playgrounds. We went back to the one with the zip line. Which is really fun. Uh, he was telling everybody there that I'm four today, it's my birthday, and I had pancakes for breakfast. Really cute. Uh, now we're gonna go get hot dogs for lunch. Sausage. But I wanted to say we got these like transportation passes, and we're here three days. So we got the three day one, it was only 17 euro per person. It's 250 a ride, so it feels like we'll definitely use that many. And obviously, it's like a little bit more expensive the shorter you get, but um, it's been a really easy to use. Bubon, and this is our first time on a trip. From the Leo's Roastal Sun, Leo's sausage stand. Uh, I saw it in a Top Jaw video, and it's the oldest sausage stand in all of Vienna. It was opened in 1928. It was taken over by the granddaughter. This iteration was built in 1997. The reason we came here is I saw it in this Top Jaw video, and they were eating Kaisa kind of, I don't know, cheese, the sausage that has cheese in it, but here it's called Big Mama. We got the Big Mama one. It has like all the sauces and the bread and I mean, you've already seen us eat, if you're watching, we ate sausage in Hamburg. We love sausage. Hayes loves hot dogs. Uh, it was a no-brainer. This is phenomenal, but the best part is that it's open till 4.30 a.m. So you could go out and have your, your beers, have a little boogie, and then come and have your plate of sausage before you go home. And this costs 16 euros. But for like two people, three people, it's a good, good bargain. Say one more thing that's gonna ruin it a little bit. When we go to cities, I always look up where Anthony Bourdain, RIP, has been. And I don't know where he had this cheese sausage, but he had it, because I read a quote that he described it as like pussy sausage because sometimes the cheese like oozes out of it. Um, I'm walking to the U-Bahn. Uh, we just came across this building which is like a recycling slash garbage disposal building and it's really cool. What a fun way to like turn a building that normally would be pretty boring into something that looks really interesting. It's like a piece of art. Okay, now uh, We've come to get the Vienna Sacher, Sacher, Vienna Sacher Tort, which is a dense chocolate cake with layers of apricot jam and then a dark chocolate on top that was invented here at this hotel uh, in 1832 for some prints. And they say that the recipe is a big secret here and it's obviously it's about the ingredients but I read on Wikipedia that it's not about the ingredients of the cake, it's that dark chocolate layer that's really important. And we might not get to try it because Hayes has ripped it off the cake. But it's his birthday and we're also having, is this Austrian? The only time I've ever had one of these is actually in Korea. It's in Einspanner which is espresso with more whipped cream, which now I feel better about since I don't think we're gonna get to eat any of this cake. I didn't know the answer, but I made Pete guess downstairs uh, what he thought a slice of this famous cake would cost. What do you think a slice of this is gonna cost? Six euros. And he was only off by about three euros, and that's before we knew that upstairs was covered in red velvet and chandeliers. <laughs> if I had seen up here, I would have been closer to the actual price. This morning. I had a pancake this morning. 
History Museum. I don't know how to say it in Austrian uh, German. Um, <laughs> but it's it's beautiful. The building is incredible. All right, let's go. Hazes ran on. I think if I was an animal, not like choosing to be one, but like if I was made to be an animal, I think it would be an anteater because they're just like lanky and a bit dopey. Is that accurate to my personality? As an anteater or as a beautiful fuck? Oh shit! Is this one of those questions like if you had a bet, would you bet on a hundred? What's the question? A hundred elephant seals the size of an anteater or one anteater the size Mommy, of an elephant seal? Mommy, can you show me how this one we get home? We could add a Lego. So That's we it. have that many animals. Yeah. What would you do? If you're like walking around this museum and then all of a sudden one of the animals That's start a movie moving. It's already been created. It's called a night at the museum. I've never seen so many animals, animals that are like animals in a museum. Um, and there's nobody here because it's a beautiful day outside. So just if you're keeping track, we do boat rides when it's raining. And we do indoor museums that are massive when it's literally the most perfect weather outside. This is European dining at its finest out in this lovely little courtyard piazza. For dinner we came just like a block from where we're staying because there's this really cute little market. It's called Meidlinger Markt. And we're actually, we're staying about 20 minutes from the center of Vienna, which is really nice because it's fun always to get to see like a neighborhood. We'll show you where we're staying in the morning because it's this new apartment hotel that's extremely lovely. And the woman that works there, Annette, who also gave Hayes two toy cars and a bunch of sweets for his birthday, uh, not only recommended this market, but recommended this restaurant, which is called Meidlinger, Meidlinger Alm. And she said it was like food that your grandmother or grandfather would make, and so that sold us on it immediately. I got the uh, Austrian gnocchi with, uh, I believe, a pork chop, right? Do we, Some do we think? Bacon and Some... Nice. Very good. And there was liver on the menu, and when there's liver on the menu, that's what I order. One last thing, we were told by a friend to have Kaiserschmarrn, and then we were told by Annette the Kaiserschmarrn at this restaurant was one of the best in Vienna. Uh, Kaiserschmarrn is like a shredded pancake, and legend has it, it was made for an emperor a long time ago, Francis Joseph. I don't know, I just read like three different stories on Wikipedia, so I'm not gonna try to tell you, but two of them involved like an inept cook who couldn't flip pancakes. Is it good? Yeah. It's really good, right, Hayes? You should try it, mommy. We're all about honesty on this channel, and uh, this is better than the sacro 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 tort. Tort. Sacro tort that we had earlier. Morning from our apartment hotel at Veltwien. As I said last night, we're staying in a lovely, kind of more residential neighborhood in Vienna, and we're staying at this relatively new apartment hotel called Veltwien. 
and I wanted to show it to you because it's absolutely beautiful. Everything here is inspired by the Vienna Werkstatt, which I just learned was a workshop in Vienna from the early 1900s to the early 1930s that was a group of artists and designers and architects dedicated towards making utilitarian items really beautiful. It later inspired the Bauhaus and Art Deco movement. But anyway, let me show you around. So we have this little like one bedroom sort of apartment. We'll start with Hayes's area here, which is just in the most beautiful light um, because there's a courtyard, which I'll show you. That's where he's been sleeping, currently watching the TV. A kitchen area that has not only everything you need, but like really well designed. And this is the Veltveen logo. I love a good branded kind of place. This place left us a bottle of wine. Uh, I guess that says like produced or made for Veltveen apartments. There are these little candies. I'll show a close up, um, but they have the Veltveen logo. As I said, the plates. I love it. And then our room where there is it's very lived in at this point. Um, a great workspace, but we've both been able to like work at either end of the desk. Lovely bedroom, super comfy bed, big TV, great windows. I love the artwork that's in this apartment. But the coolest thing, we've never seen this. This is, maybe you don't care, Kiki. Um, this is an air conditioning. So like when it's closed, it's just a piece of art and then the air conditioning like opens. And then last up, Our own patio. Oh, this just feels so European. As I've noted, I'm not into the kind of like frou-frou stuffiness that is kind of prevalent in central Vienna. And it's been really nice to see like more how I imagine locals live. <laughs> There's also a really lovely little garden in here. <laughs> so our travel style is that if we have like a really busy day of sightseeing, we like to follow it with like a more chill day. So we're about two miles from the Nashmarkt, which is Vienna's oldest or biggest or both uh, market. And it's a lovely, the weather right now is like, the high today is like 79 degrees Fahrenheit. And on Sunday it drops to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're in like a three or four day, like lovely spell. Who needs us to tell you about this market when you can just watch a montage of Hayes literally touching everything? It's a really old market uh, and it was allowed to expand when some guy filled in the Vienna River that we passed yesterday. And at one point, if your goods came on cart, they had to be sold at this market, otherwise they could be sold at the harbor. And Nash Markt means munch market, which makes sense, because Yiddish, we say Nash. Daddy, do you know what I just walk? Touch snake skin. You, you just touched some snake skin? Yeah. Fruit, snake skin fruit. I touched that already. I just walked past this place, and we can resist. It looks... So good. I mean, kebabs are just a thing of beauty, aren't they? There's neither here nor there, but we just saw the sign, and it's still so wild to me that you can drink beer and wine here a full five years before you'd be able to in the States. Just take a little bit, one piece. Thank you. Thank you. Love a good public order. Spout. Point. <laughs> Wait in line now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We have a really long, beautiful train ride tomorrow, so we let Hayes buy uh, chocolate because it was one euro for lint. How does that even work? It expires next month, but we're eating it tomorrow. And it always reminds me of that TV show we always talk about here, uh, Old Enough, where the little Japanese kids go do things. But anyway, Hayes, Hayes wins because he went to pay for it, and then the guy gave him an extra chocolate. But the chocolate he picked was white chocolate, which I don't know if he's my son, but he's clearly Pete's son. Any <laughs> 
<laughs> Very good. The best part about Hayes getting all these free samples is that he's still eating the last one while he's getting the next one. What do you think? Oh, you did? If you're watching this because you're actually coming to Vienna and you're gonna go to Nash Market and you have a kid, just know that there's a really excellent playground right across the street with water features and Hayes' new favorite as of yesterday, a zip line. Which is really fantastic because the entire two mile walk here, he was begging to go back to the playground with a zip line, which we're gonna be nowhere near today. And we told him we would look for one, not thinking we would find one. And this playground has a zip line. It's not the most friendliest of welcomes. Are you playing by the rules? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. It's our last night in Vienna. And if this place looks familiar, it's because it's where we ate last night. Uh, we came back for drinks. We're gonna go somewhere else for dinner. But this market and neighborhood is just so lovely and it feels so local. So, it ain't broke. Hey, you're broke! I need, I need mommy to explain how to play this game. Hayes is playing, but he's going through the card deck to try and find his pairs. And just in case you weren't sure you were in Europe. Yeah, Brawl Spritz was really good, so I'm having another one. Uh, but I made Pete order it, so I was flying the drone, and I asked him to ask for more ice. And look at how much ice I have. That is the one downfall. Like, it's like the only con of Europe, I think. I can't really think of any others. But the, the lack of ice is, is a big one. For dinner, we came to this place that we walked by when we got here off the train station. Uh, it's a Pakistani restaurant called Maidlinger Diwan. And it is a uh, pay what you want. It's buffet and every night they have five veg and two non-veg dishes. We sat outside and it was really great. And tomorrow, we're taking the train to Zagreb. So I think that is the end of this video uh, for me. I guess third time's a charm when it comes to Vienna. This was a really wonderful couple of days. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching, we appreciate it. If you want to follow along as we continue to make our way to Tbilisi, Georgia by train. We started in Copenhagen, that was a few videos back. Uh, feel free and we will see you in Zagreb. Auf Wiedersehen. I'm off to do the dishes. It's part of the pay what you want. <laughs>